There is a new bill that has passed both the House and the Senate and is now on its way for President Obama to sign it into law. You probably haven't heard much about this because it's not making the news, but the ramifications mean a limit on some current freedoms of speech. Ben has the reality check. Well, the law is titled the Federal Restricted Buildings and Grounds Improvement Act of 2011. Could it sound less exciting? In fact, it sounds like some bill to plant flowers around the Capitol, but it's not. Here's how the bill actually reads. Whoever knowingly enters or remains in any restricted building or grounds without lawful authority to do so, knowingly and with the intent to impede or disrupt the orderly conduct of government business or official functions, engages in disorderly or disruptive conduct in or within such proximity to any restricted building or grounds, and impedes or disrupts the orderly conduct of government business and official functions, or also knowingly engages in any act of physical violence against any person or property in any restricted building or grounds, or attempts or conspires to do so, shall be punished as provided in subsection B. A lot of legal speak there. So what is the bill actually about? Well, the idea is to keep people from trespassing on White House grounds, which right now is not a federal crime. But it is prosecuted under a Washington, D.C. code. My bill would explicitly protect these residences of the president and the vice president from intruders and would clarify current law to distinguish between those who are able to enter the grounds lawfully, like the Secret Service, and those who enter without permission. Well, none of that sounds unacceptable. But as usual, this law does much more than what lawmakers claim on the surface. Why? Because if you read down further, you get a definition of what these restricted areas of disruption actually consist of. We're not just talking about the White House. The term restricted buildings or grounds means any posted, cordoned off, or otherwise restricted area of the White House or its grounds, or the vice president's official residence or its grounds of a building or grounds where the president or other person protected by the Secret Service is or will be temporarily visiting, or of a building or grounds so restricted in conjunction with an event designated as a special event of national significance. So under the verbiage of this law, you cannot protest with signs or speech in a building or in proximity to a building where the president will visit or where anyone with Secret Service protection might visit. That means you cannot protest high-ranking government officials who have Secret Service protection. It also includes presidential candidates who receive Secret Service protection, and includes former presidents who have that protection. And of course, visiting dignitaries from other nations, they receive Secret Service protection as well. Protesting them under this could be considered a federal crime. So here's what you need to know. No matter how it's sold, this bill does not simply cover White House grounds and the residence of the vice president. It covers far more. And without question, as it's written, passing a law that prevents people from being disruptive flies in the face of our First Amendment right. It may be the single most important right our founders and framers gave us. Congress shall make no law abridging the freedom of speech or the press or the right of people peaceably to assemble and to petition the government for a redress of grievances. The founders didn't say you couldn't be loud when petitioning that government. And that is Reality Check.